a lot of black people want to leave this country because of this buffoon right here. Hey, yo, DJ, now that I got you, drop this track from your president. And then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside or, or almost a cleaning? Because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs. So it'd be interesting to check that so that you're going to have to use medical doctors with. But it sounds, it sounds interesting to me. And then I see the t Man, what in the whole yeah. Man, okay. I'm gonna get this from Larry first, T-Stream, but let, mm -hmm. let me put it this way. Larry, uh, I've seen a lot of people trying to make it seem as though Trump was joking, trying to make it seem as though it was nothing to see, the Democrats making up a big nothing burger. But when you see this happening in this state, take a look, there was actual people calling Maryland to ask about Lysol's and injections, stuff like that, should they be using it? And Lysol themselves had to come out and make a statement that you should not be putting their product, cleaning products, disinfecting products in your body. Larry, how are Americans actually talking this guy out of this wordplay? That was horrible wordplay. And it don't matter how you try to shake it up. You can say he should have used better words. You can say he was joking. Either way is wrong. You shouldn't joke about something like that. And you shouldn't be trying to act as though you're smarter than what you are and making those comments. But Larry, let me give it to you before I break my streak of cussing. Mm -hmm. it, it, this, I'll tell you the real sad thing about this is he might try and he might try and say he was joking. We know he wasn't joking. But the sad thing about this is there's going to be people out there that are actually going to get hurt and get sick and potentially die because someone's going to actually do this. Look at what someone's they said in Maryland. Look at this. that. Look at that. That's from Maryland. The Maryland emergency yeah. management team posted that because they was getting phone calls about it. I mean, it's just, it, it's absolutely absurd. It's just, it, it's, it's absolutely absurd. I, I mean, look, I'm not one. No, I, I, no, I, I, I don't like, I don't like to put myself in, in a camp where people will say I'm an extremist, but I really truly believe that if the Republicans, which they are not going to do, if they're not going to do the whole 25th Amendment on this dude to get him out of office, to remove him from office, all I have to say is the Republican Party is, is a clear and present threat to the safety and security of the American people. They have, at this point, they have basically become like a, 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 like a domestic terrorist group. I mean, they are doing things that are that are actively working against the safety and security of the American people. I mean, it's just like when you see all these protests out there and you see the, the you see hundreds of people out in front of these capitals protesting. I really wish they would go out there and just just fire hose those people. Now, I'm not saying they need to go out there and do like they did in the 60s where they turn the water up so high that it's blasting people's teeth out. But they should. It's cold out there. People out there with jackets on and stuff. They need to go out there and just blast them with water and make them freezing so it's so uncomfortable they don't want to stay out there. But they need to get them because they're they're clearly not abiding by the social distancing laws mm -hmm. or the rules. I mean, they're all these people, and these are not. You're not looking at a bunch of Democrats or a bunch of independents. These are a bunch of Trump supporters who are out there listening to listening to, to a podcast and 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 these conservative right wing talk shows. And they're out there now basically spreading the coronavirus amongst their own ranks, which some people will say whatever. But these people want to culture, they want to put pressure on our politicians to open up our government, open up our schools, open up our businesses before it's ready. And more people as a consequence are going to get sick and more people are going to die. Because what? Because they don't like their kids and they're sick of being at home with them? Because... You know, because what? Because they, they want to go back to work before they, you know, so that they can get sick and die and then not have a job and leave their family without anybody uh, that a breadwinner because now they're dead. I mean, it's just, it's lunacy. It makes no sense. It absolutely makes no sense. Let me give it, it to T-Stream, so Larry. 
it's really frustrating and it's hard to even it's hard to even understand why these people are pushing for this when they clearly know that it, what they're doing is dangerous to the American people. Yeah, let me give it to T Streams. But before I give it to you, T Streams, I'm going to answer Curtis Hayes, who's saying he's being sarcastic. Um, Curtis, look, bro, there are some things and times where sarcasm works. Being the president of the United States in a press briefing that's supposed to be about the health of the nation during a pandemic is not the time for sarcasm. And Trump has done this over and over again with his dumb ass, oh goodness, I messed up my street, where his, where his idiocy <laughs> didn't know what he was talking about. And y'all try to write it off as sarcasm in other moments where sarcasm is not needed. T-Stream, speak on it. You know what, man? This is uh, this is one of them, them times where it almost makes you feel embarrassed to be American because uh, you know, seeing this is seeing that this guy is the is is supposed to be our leader. You know, I I expect you know him not to be uh, knowledgeable in all areas. That's why presidents surround themselves with advisors and stuff like that but man this when i first heard my wife told me about this yesterday and i was in the other room and the first thing the first thing that came to my head was you know stop looking at facebook news he, this man he he the man is stupid but he ain't he, he not he can't be that stupid huh yeah by the time i made it into the by the time I made it into the other room and started seeing everybody, now it's on MSN and CNN. I'm like, what? This Negro actually said that? Don't call him a Negro. And, and then oh, I, give him that order. <laughs> then I okay. turned around and watched the video. And I said, okay, this is that point where you can clearly see that dude is absolutely clueless underwater on anything that that has to do with this deal here and it's you know it's a shame that uh you know it's a shame now should somebody go out there and do that who's going to who's going to be liable for that you know um who's going to be who's going to be responsible for uh, you know for for that type of propaganda you know it it, it, it came from one place but how could you how could somebody sit there and even i mean even if you don't have a medical degree you know better than to put disinfect inject yourself with disinfectant godly i mean i don't see how man i, I feel like i'm losing wisdom and, and intelligence just speaking on it you well, know well, t stream let, let me elude to this there are some cancer drugs where they use toxic gas as a part of the treatment. And to me, it looked clearly like Trump was thinking, okay, if they've got these other toxic drugs that they can turn into a drug that helps somebody, maybe we can literally take Lysol, bleach and all this kind of stuff and make it work. If they could have done that, they would have been done it for HIV. Bruh, stop trying to be an expert on something you don't know about. I just wanted to give some context T streams to maybe why he thought that. I don't, I don't even think he was thinking. He, he, he couldn't because the the way this when I saw the video, this this is this is how this is how it touched me. When I saw the video, I I saw that light click up in his head. Bling. Oh goodness. Then he commented. Oh lord. He knew he jacked up. Damn it. And then he started scrambling for words. No. Well, no it, it's interesting. I think it's interesting and and. And well, maybe you can just so you know what we needed right then. We needed that? Bill Duke. We needed Bill Duke right then. Oh my <laughs> lord! You, you know you didn't fucked up, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know you didn't fucked, you know you fucked up, right? Yeah, you can you can literally see it. You can literally see it when when he recognized it because the whole the whole tone changed and and it probably wasn't on his it probably wasn't on his own cognizant neither. It was probably somebody on the sideline off a of camera like. <laughs> it was that doctor, the doctor, the female doctor up there. That's who we was looking at when he tried to change tone. 
And Dr. Burke her. was looking. She had her legs all pointed inwards. She was looking down hey, like, oh, what geez. in the hell? This guy yeah. is dead. Yeah, he know he just he just stabbed he just stabbed himself in the throat. Yeah. But you know, <clears throat> to the to the to the men and women of America, you know, mm-hmm. and and, and I, I'm saying this is as if the entire country is watching this channel right now. Well, you know? they if, are, and they will be right. You guys, we have to make a decision to get this dude up out of here. Mm-hmm. There is there is no rationale to nothing that he's thinking or doing. Yeah, he got guts, he's a little bit ballsy and stuff like that. He's you know, he he he's free spirit and say whatever the hell he wants to say. That's fine, that's dandy. That contributes to his personality, it does not contribute. To his ability or his adeptness to run this country mm-hmm. and if we keep uh, you know and it's, it's coming out more and more and more and more but man d- I, I literally could not believe it when i saw it and you know you know like i'm just like nah he he ain't say that he, he ain't that he, he not that stupid he, he said it he's stupid but he can't be that stupid he's stupid and then when i saw it man i was just like Hell no. <laughs> maybe just, he has a mental disorder. Maybe he's maybe he's bipolar or maybe he has Alzheimer's or maybe there's some cognitive issue that he has going on that, that causes him to be this this much of a lunatic. Cause it's just not normal behavior. Yeah. I mean, but if if you lived a life where no one has been able to put a check on you. You've been able to be reckless. You've been able to do what you want. It was supposed to stop in the White House, but he's been able to get away with so many things that other people haven't been able to get away with. It's kind of like, why would I change my behavior if, first of all, I didn't want the job anyway? And so now that I have the job, I'm just going to act however the hell I want to act, and let's see how far it goes. And if there's no one there to stop me, why would I not do and say what I want to say? I told people early on when he first became president, the hood has officially taken residence at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. You know what they said to me? They was like, no, Lamar, you ain't even gave the guy a chance. I, I gave him a chance after they lied about the size of that rally trying to compare it to Barack Obama's rally. I didn't even need to know because that was concrete data that you were trying to lie to people about and people was buying it and selling it. But they ain't get me because I don't buy wolf tickets. Man, I, I I live I live in the DC area, man. And when we had when we had the inauguration for Barack, this whole region was shut down. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had to bring in extra metro trains. They were telling people you need to plan your schedule accordingly because it was going to be a madhouse. When Trump got inaugurated, they didn't have any of that. They were like, yeah, go about your business. They were like, everything's open because there's nobody down there. There's like yeah, four people in Trump, you know? So, uh, I mean, it was, well, I mean, seriously, when you looked at, when you looked at Barack's thing, it looked like, it looked like they took the Million Man March and the March on Washington, put them together, and then came up with a couple other marches and moved everybody down there. And that's what, but for Trump's joint, it, it looked like, you know, it looked like somebody was giving free tickets away to a Color Me Bad concert that, you know, <laughs> and, I mean, it was just, it was, it was, it was, there was no one there. Hey man, I, I just, I dislike that comment. I, that song, I want you to know I do it all for love. I really enjoyed that track when it came out. That was during the New Jack era. <laughs> How dare you disrespect these artists that work their ass off and you're going to compare them to Trump? Larry, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Larry, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. As a matter of fact, because of your insolence, Larry, Uh DJ, DJ, play this track for him again. I'm, I'm snatching that mic out your hand, Larry. That's what you get. I'm scooping that mic out your hand, comparing color me bad to Trump. Make no daggone sense. That is so damn funny, man. That's man. Just 